Hi ladies, it's Kristen and I am here for my 37 week update. Um, I'm trying to remember everything I have to, to tell you about. I also have stuff to show you so I want to try and make sure I do everything and I have a fly buzzing around that's driving me crazy too so hopefully that won't distract me too much. Um, let's see. I'll tell you how I'm feeling first. This week has been actually a really, really tough week for me. Um, just, just not really a great week overall. Um, I was really stressed out. Uh, I had my home visit, which, I mean, that was a good visit on Tuesday, but, but I had been feeling like the baby was pretty low, like really low, like I'm walking around with a bowling ball between my legs low. And, uh, and my midwife confirmed at the home visit that the baby was pretty low, which ended up stressing me out majorly because I don't want to have a baby at 37 weeks. I mean, I know that some babies do come and I feel like I've got most of the stuff for the baby, but, um, you know, I'm just not mentally ready yet. So anyways, so the baby was super, super low and I also, it didn't have much food in the house. I haven't gotten the freezer meals put up that I want to. I've only done two so far, and I really want to do um, probably four more suppers um, and then some lunches and have, you know, a fully stocked cupboard. So anyways, the day after my home visit, I went and did some shopping just to be able to get food. I put in an order with Sam's, which is really easy because... I do the order online, then I go drive up, I pay for it, and they load the car. So I don't have to do any work. But I did also need to go to Walmart. Our Walmart hasn't gotten the shopping yet. I can't wait for it to come. I'm praying that it comes to us, but I still have to walk around Walmart. So I walked around Walmart feeling like there's this bowling ball between my legs and like thinking, you know, what do I do if my water breaks and this baby starts coming in the middle of Walmart? So I kind of amused myself with, um, you know, with imagining that scenario, which as unlikely as it was. Anyways, then I went to the office. I only did one appointment this week because I had my home visit and then I did one appointment for, for a primary of mine, my very first primary client as a student midwife. And I did, so I didn't want to miss her appointment. She's due way in the future from now. Um, after I go back on call, but she's having her early appointments now, so I really wanted to be there for that, um, and her appointment was really good, so that was that was nice, and it also gave me some time. Hers was the last appointment of the day, so that gave me a little bit more time to talk to my midwife after the appointment, which was good because it meant it was just she and I at the home visit. It was my midwife and then um, both students who will be at, at my birth, which is fine, but sometimes I just want to be able to talk about things just with her. So that was nice to have a few more minutes and to let her know, you know, that I was, that I felt was feeling really anxious about the baby being so low and everything and her going out of town this weekend. She's not going to be too terribly far away, but if the baby's coming fast, She's far away, and I'm not worried about the baby coming without anybody here. I've now had two babies come accidentally unassisted, and things have gone smoothly, but I really want her to be there. So, anyways, that's that was causing a little bit, a little bit, more than a little bit of anxiety, too. So, anyways, just a really low baby and a lot of pain. The heartburn has let up. I had gotten to where I was having a lot of heartburn, uh, but with baby moving lower, that's let up. But now I'm uncomfortable. I still feel like my digestive system is out of whack. My midwife really wanted me to try adding back in the Floridix. So at night, I'm doing a probiotic, a small dose of Floridix. Even though my iron levels weren't low, she just feels like it might help um, with the digestive system and just overall energy and everything. Um, and I've been... So I've been having some problems with constipation too. I actually think that's probably why the baby is low is because I wasn't having Braxton Hicks contractions, but when I hadn't gone to the bathroom in a while, I kept getting all these cramps really low. I can't remember if I told you guys about this last week or not, but they felt a little bit more like period cramps rather than like involving everything, nothing in my back, just at the front. And they would last like when, you know, my body knew that I needed to go. I hadn't gone in a while. They'd start. Then I'd finally go and they'd last for a little while after I went and then go away. But I was definitely like seeing more, um, like more creamy discharge and stuff with the cramps. Nothing that looked like a show, 
for those of you guys that know what a show or a bloody show looks like, but definitely more. Um, so, you know, I think it was definitely, it was irritating something, if nothing else. And I think that might be part of what was getting baby down low. Um, the Floridix and the probiotic and doing some magnesium tea has helped uh, with that. Maybe now a little bit the opposite. Things are pretty loose right now, which is also uncomfortable. So I've got to see if I can find a happy medium. I, I stuck my, I, do, I like to do smoothies with kefir, and I stuck my kefir milk in the fridge before the fair and haven't touched it. So I hauled that out this morning, rinsed the grains, and put them in a cup of milk. I'm hoping that they'll revitalize over the next couple days, and I can start doing some smoothies again just to get some, like, real food fixing going on. And I should also probably, I hadn't thought about this yet. Well, I have thought about it, but I hadn't considered adding it. But I should probably do some broth every day, too. Again, just to have that whole food gut healing going on and see if that will help in addition to the supplements. Um, about the magnesium, I might have talked about the magnesium before. I usually use natural calm, and I've always just gotten the plain variety. But we've been looking into some stuff to help um, a couple of our kids who are pretty active. I didn't bring the book in here because it's not really relevant to pregnancy, but in case it's interesting to you guys, I don't remember the doctor's name, but it's a doctor or maybe a psychiatrist, I don't remember. Anyways, he works with kids with ADD. The book's pretty new, it's called Finally Focused. I think it was published in May of this year, which is 2017. And a friend recommended it to me. And it's a really good book. I've been really pleased with it. Lots of strategies to try to help these kids kinda be able to focus when they're supposed to and maybe not be quite so manic at times and magnesium was one of the things that was recommended to to start as a regular supplement because lots of kids are deficient in magnesium and so I decided to try the orange flavored natural calm for them because he actually ironically recommended natural calm in the book uh, but I thought the orange might go over better and so the kids really like it and I tried it too and it's really good so if you are, you know, if you're wary about <clears throat> trying to do an unflavored magnesium, the orange at least tastes good to my family. And I, again, I didn't, I didn't bring the book in here or the natural calm. I can try and remember to show y'all both next week if you want, or especially the natural calm, because we often recommend that ladies take magnesium during pregnancy too. Uh, so let me think. So other than baby being low, I've had like a little bit of what I might call prodromal labor in the evenings. Uh, I think it's mostly related to stress and anxiety because when I'm able to relax, it doesn't happen. When I get stressed, it does. Scott and I had what I would, what he coined an intense conversation last night. It wasn't an argument. It was just, I don't know. It was one of those things where like sometimes you're like, well, in the past you've done this and in the past you've done that. And it's like both of you realize, okay, well... I need to stop referring to the past and refer to now because this shouldn't be an adversarial conversation. And But it still, it was kind of hard for me to shake it. Like usually I would have just brushed it off because we did resolve it calmly. <laughs> um, but it just bothered me and I think it was because I was already feeling kind of rough um, and anxious. And so I was having some more Braxton Hicks. And so maybe a couple nights I feel like, you know, I've had Braxton Hicks come. When I went to my ladies Bible study... I had like three in like a 30 minute time span and so I finally got up and went to the bathroom just to pee and they stopped after that. So I definitely think they tend to happen when I'm anxious or I haven't gone to the bathroom and so there's, you know, stuff irritating. So anyways, overall I feel really heavy and really uncomfortable. Um, I've, I don't have it on today. But I have still been wearing the prenatal cradle. I stopped wearing the band around the middle just because I think my belly's gotten to the point now where it's uncomfortable. Like it feels sore when I put it on. So I think it's bruising some. And so I haven't been wearing that one. But I've still been wearing the prenatal cradle. I, wanted, I decided to take a break because I've been getting some chafing just from the straps up here. Which would probably go away if I wore it over a tank top. But I'm also super hot, so I don't want to wear lots and lots of layers. So it's just kind of a balance. If I'm going out, if I know we're going to be taking a long walk around the property, I wear it. But yesterday, 
I just really tried to take it easy. I've actually tried to take it as easy as possible. Like I've put my feet up more um, and just let myself have a break more the past few days. Um, I had a visit from the nurse too. We In our county we have nurses who will come visit pregnant and new mamas. And my nurse visit was on um, was this week, just a couple days after the home visit. And that was good. She's really young. I probably know more about birth and babies than she does. But, um, you know, it was, uh, it's always good to have somebody to talk to. And she asked me, you know, what would help me feel less anxious. And I told her that just getting through the recording for my Feeling Great class, because the rest of what I need to do is just getting handouts ready and adding links. And that's the kind of thing I can do in the recliner with the laptop. I can't record in the recliner with the laptop. I have to be in here. You can't see it, but it's right behind me. We have a little microphone on the desk in the corner of the bedroom. And this is where I record. And I mean, I must have ended up recording like 20 hours of audio for this class. It feels like it at least. Um, so I really wanted, you know, all the ladies to get, you know, really get something out of it. But in the end, it ended up being exhausting for me to do. Um, but I. At this point now, I do have all the audios recorded, so that feels really good. I have another promotion coming up that I've got to get some stuff ready for, but that one again, it it feels more low-key because it doesn't require me to be in here recording. I can be out front on the laptop working um, to some extent, which means I can have my feet up, and it also means I can kind of watch what my kids are doing in the afternoon. Um, you know, Scott's out there with them, but one of the things that they'll do is, you know, they'll do math because Scott is in charge of math, but they'll let other subjects that they should be doing go because I'm not there to say you guys need to do them. And I kind of want to shepherd them through it, though this week we're going to give some consequences <laughs> if they don't get it done. They don't get to watch Friday night Star Trek or Friday night movies if they don't get it done, which is really crummy for them. But I hope if they end up losing them. It helps them re realize that, hey, school's really important. So you make the choice. If you want Friday night movies, you do your schoolwork. So anyways, um, yeah, but I, I already feel a lot better. This week, this coming week, is the last school week that I have planned before the baby. And so I, I actually told the nurse I'd feel much better if I get the recordings done. And then if I get through this one more week of school... I'll feel much better. So I think that I'll feel ready if I can. I don't know. Maybe not. I have some other anxieties too, not about the birth, but just about, you know, a baby, newborn, what that's going to bring, all of that stuff. So anyways, just on the whole, I guess it really hasn't been a great week for me. I mean, I, I'm, I am pleased with the school we got done. I'm pleased with the progress I've made on my projects. It's just been really hard emotionally and anxiety wise. Today I actually don't feel like the baby is really low. Like I'm not feeling that same pressure. So I don't know. Has baby moved back up some which I find a little bit unlikely or is it just because I've been taking it much easier putting my feet up and everything and that just helps it you know helps it feel better not pushing myself. Um, but anyways so that's like pregnancy symptom wise and all of that. I'll be really happy. I really I really want to go right up to 40 weeks with this baby, even though I'm super uncomfortable. I just want that for the baby and also for my peace of mind. But with that, okay, I'm going to show you some stuff that I got in. Also, because the baby was so low and I was feeling really anxious, I've mentioned it a bunch so y'all know, um, one of the things I was really anxious about was the car seat. And so uh, somebody suggested actually in the video comments one week to use the completion discount from my Amazon registry, which I'm eligible for now, to get the car seat. And I actually decided to go ahead and take that advice. So, um, and what, what really prompted it was uh, we talked about, like I talked about in a previous video, about hearing a lot of good things about a rock and play and like how nice it is to be able to go right by the bed and all that kind of stuff and that they're pretty portable and I've we've had some clients come into the office and rave about them so anyways I had a little rock and play model on my baby registry and um, and I saw somebody posted there's like a baby deals blog I think that I've been subscribed to forever and get notifications on that on my RSS feeds and 
they noted that that Amazon had marked that rock and play like 40% off. Um, so it's a it's a nicer model that has the rocker on it, like the auto rocker, but it was marked down to the same price as one that didn't. So I decided, well, maybe I'll splurge on that for the baby um, and get the car seat too. I did decide on a different car seat than I put on the registry because the registry car seat, I thought I remembered it being $80 and then it was $110 when I recorded the video last week and I went and looked um, the other day and it was $127. <laughs> it's like, that's just insane. I don't want to feel like I'm paying that much more for it. So I looked at some other car seats and I actually settled on an even flow model, which made me a little bit nervous because I've always had either Graco, um, what are they, Snug Rides? Anyways, a Graco Snug Ride, I think that's right, or um, a Britax or a Britax infant seat, which is what we have in the big van, but that seat is a baby seat, but it's huge. It's like too big for our little van. And um, so I settled on the, on the Even Flow one. I think it's the Even Flow Light Max 35, but it got it gets pretty good reviews. And they said that it's like really comfortable and cushy for the babies. That was one of the big things that kind of sold me on it because I'm thinking this baby will probably be in the van with me a lot, going to prenatal appointments and even to births. So I decided to give it a try. I read some on it. I read the manual for it on Even Flow's website and everything. Um, so I'll show it to you. It's not here yet. I'll show it to you probably in the next video. Um, and I'll show you the rock and play as well. So those are coming and I did get, so, and the even flow seat was, I think $90. So I had considered another gray coat that was like 75 or $76, but they had reviews that the padding was really thin. And that's something again, I'm worried about. I want the baby to be comfortable and also it's going to be in the middle of the winter when the baby's riding around in the seat and sitting against cold, hard plastic just doesn't sound appealing to me. So I'll show you both of those when they come in. I got the 15% off, which really helped on both of them. Um, and I'm excited. I can't wait for them to get here, actually, which, um, you know, it's fun to get baby stuff in the mail. And I'm glad that I feel like it's fun to get baby stuff in the mail. I think I'm, I feel like I'm able to think about the baby a little bit more now. So this is the, let's see what I have to show you. So I got a couple things and these are things that came off my registry that were purchased for me. And I think it's so much fun. A lot of the stuff that's coming is like kind of the fun stuff off the registry, which is neat because this baby is not going to get much new stuff. So these are little toy boats for the bathtub and they're little stacking boats. My kids have always loved stacking toys like this. So I hope this baby will like them. And then another little tub toy, another toy boat. And it's got little cars. And I thought it was really cute. So those came off my registry. And thank you for those. And then th these are from a local friend who um, sent these with me. And they're cloth diapers. So they're really cute. So this one's a chicken one. It's super cute. This is a friend that um, we know through 4-H. So... She sent me a chicken diaper and then a little polka dot diaper. And the cool thing about these is um, she's got these charcoal bamboo inserts in them, which I've always wanted to try and never have gotten any. So I'm super excited about trying those. And they're little pockets. They're, they're regular size pockets, so they'll be a little bit before the baby wears them. But they're super cute chickens. And then... Let's see what else. Oh, also, I wanted to show y'all these. So there are scientific studies that show that if pregnant women eat dates, as in like date fruit, from like 36 weeks till they go into labor, that they are less likely to have their waters break early. Um, they're less likely to need to be induced. Their bleeding is um, minimal compared to other moms and all kinds of other things. So that like there's actually scientific studies that show that. Sorry, there was a calendar reminder coming up. So I decided to get some, I did this with Sadie too, but I decided to get some little date bars and these are, our health food store sells these. I don't like eating like just dates, but they sell these little date bars and it's dates, like they mince the dates and mash them and then they roll them in coconut. And so I've been eating two of these every day since I got them because I think it's the, roughly the equivalent to the amount of dates that 
it, the women used in the studies. So that was one thing I wanted to show you if you want to try dates too. And then the other thing is, is I got, um, we got our newborn screen card in, which is, makes me really happy <laughs> because this is what we need to be able to do. Um, some people call it the PKU test, but the newborn screening test for the baby. If you've never seen a card, like if you have your babies in the hospital, you probably haven't seen a card. But this is, this is what the Michigan card looks like. And so they, they test the baby's blood spots, which I'm going to try not to touch that. But, hang on, let's see if I can show you. There we go. So that's where they do the little blood spots in each of these circles. And then they mail that to the state lab and they test um, for, in Michigan, it's for 50 some disorders now. And I think by next year it'll be 60 something, is what they told us at the Michigan Midwives Association meeting. And then there's a whole bunch of pamphlets and stuff in here, which are, you know, government propaganda. <laughs> but I'm so happy that this came. I had actually forgotten about it till my home visit, so I had Scott fax the form <laughs> so that it got there fast, and she got the package to me. So we have the newborn screen card. I also got a stack of washcloths, which I which I had also forgotten. I just stopped at the dollar store and got some of those. Um, so I think. I, I really think now that's everything, once the car seat gets here, that's everything I need for the baby. Uh, the only other thing left on like my list of baby wants is to get a Mai Tai, which I actually meant to check eBay for this morning to see if they had any that were a print that I liked. But anyway, so, uh, and then, you know, there's just the rest of the stuff on my baby registry is all kind of fluff. Um, but I feel like when the car seat gets here, that'll be like another level of relief. And then getting through this next week of school will be another level of relief. And especially hitting 38, 39 weeks. Like if the baby comes like a day or two before I hit 40 weeks, that's cool. But I just don't want to have the baby like right now. So that's kind of where I'm at is like really try and relax. Really try and be intentional about making sure I'm taking care of myself. One more thing before I go, because I know I'm getting long, um, is I had noticed that I was having a little bit of swelling in the evenings. Not much, but a little bit. And again, along with like baby feeling low and feeling tense, I decided, okay, I really need to pay attention to my diet. And I didn't bring the chart in here. I showed it to y'all weeks ago. Um, but I got my little um, chart to check off my pregnancy diet checklist, my brewer chart. And I've been like religiously checking that off for a few days and I noticed like the very first day that I did it, no swelling that night and I've not had any swelling come back since. So I've been a believer in the brewer diet and keeping up with the checklist during times of stress because it's given me seven healthy babies thus far and you know fingers crossed for and prayers given for another healthy baby but I'm definitely feeling like a believer right now after you know consistently having that small amount of swelling and then like none right from you know the first day that I made sure okay I'm definitely gonna make sure I'm actually eating the way I think I should so anyways and hopefully you know that that gives my body what it needs to help to help keep baby in for a couple more weeks at least anyways I will see you for my 38 week update I will have another appointment to tell you about and I'll tell you about um, you know, hopefully be able to show you the car seat and everything like that. And anything else that's come up along the way. I am wearing a dress today so I can show you my belly, but not really. And this is a maternity dress I've had forever. But baby's sticking pretty far out because I don't have anything helping hold baby in right now. But there's my 37 moving on to 38 week belly with a super low baby. So anyways... I will talk to you ladies next week. Let me know how you are doing, and I hope that you have a blessed week.